Welcome back to wagertalk.com. I'm Marco D'Angelo joined in studio with Chris from Vegas Synergy and Ralph Michaels from Cal Sports. Guys, we've got a big one in Columbus this uh, Saturday. We've got Penn State at Ohio State. Chris, this is going to be your best bet, so we're going to get to you in a moment. But I have a question i got to throw out to both of you because you're going to hear a lot of talk this week. We heard it last week involving Penn State and Michigan about revenge, and people are going to be talking about revenge again this week. My question is, who really has the revenge in this game? Is it Ohio State because they lost, or is it Penn State because even though they beat Ohio State, Ohio State was the team that played for the national playoff championship. Well, I, yeah, that is one of the things to consider in the revenge situation. But as you mentioned, Ohio State went to the dance. So is there revenge on their, on their front? I don't think so. So I, if anything, is it's just Penn State wanting to get there in the long run. And I think they're going to have a high motivation on it. Now, Ralph, obviously, I politely disagree. I knew you would. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The coaches, the players remember what happens at the end of that game. They remember walking out of Happy Valley with a loss. They remember they were a favorite. And one thing I want to bring up is that I think revenge is well overused in college football. I think you have to be expected to win. You have to be the, a favorite of more than a few points. When you lose, you then have revenge. Just because you lost the game doesn't give you revenge. Ohio State is in that role. And again, when a team is an elite team and has very few losses, I think what happens on the field matters. And they remember that loss from Penn State. All right. I'll throw in the tiebreaker and I'm going to go with it's a bigger revenge game for Penn State because they didn't get to partake in the national championship when they did beat Penn, beat Ohio State last year. And it was a game and there's no question. It was a fluky ending. They had to block. Was it a punt or a field goal that they blocked that they two, ran, they blocked know, two kicks? Yeah, yeah. It, uh, definitely. It was very happy in Happy Valley at the end of that game last year. But I'm going to go to you, uh, Ralph, as we set this game up, and we'll hear what Chris has to say because it, it, it is his best bet. Something tells me you're going to be talking Ohio State. You know, Chris, obviously we talked a little bit before, and, you know, I, I know you're going to be on, on the opposite side here, but I just want to make a few points towards the Ohio State backers. You know, a couple weeks ago this line was 9.5 and people were betting the nine and a half number. Well, what's happened since that point? Ohio State was on a bye, Penn State was on national TV, and all of a sudden we get a three-point line adjustment in this game where the line is now six and a half. Well, in the last three games, Penn State has won those three by 28 points per game and covered by 13. Ohio State's won their games by 49 points per game and covered by 20. Granted, you played well for a whiteout, which you expect, but Penn State had 98 yards rushing, 2.5 yards per carry against Northwestern, 39 yards rushing, 1.1 yard per carry against Indiana. And oh yeah, let's mention that revenge. Urban Meyer is 36 and 12 with extra rest. One of the best coaches with extra time to prep. And Ohio State is 14 and 0 against the spread with revenge against a winning team. To you, Chris. Well, Penn State's still averaging five yards per carry, so they must be doing something right. Uh, 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 you make some good points. It's a, as we discussed, it's a back-to-back -back, uh, that would be horrible under most circumstances. But uh, let's face it, the second half of the game last week was, you know, time off. It, it, they didn't. They had the game in hand. Uh, uh, they they clearly showed that they're an elite program so far this season, and they did it against one of the best defenses in the league. Um, Ohio State has had two weeks to prepare, and they've got the mild revenge supposedly, which is up in the air. Uh, but they still made the playoff. Uh, I have most of the metrics in this matchup pretty much even. They're both giving up, give or take, three yards per carry. Uh, but Ohio State doesn't have a great pass defense, and I think that that might come into play. They played similar strengths of schedule. That's why I think the stats, you know, should follow suit, so to speak. I, I agree with you. It'd be nicer to be getting over a touchdown. But I, I look for this game to be wild and crazy, and I see Penn State being able to, to move the ball through the air. Uh, both teams can stop the run. Uh, I think points are going to come in, uh, are going to be in, uh, pretty important. Um, that's about it. My, my, my metrics have take the points. I, I, I want the points in this game. I, I'm certainly not going to bank on a, on a big win. Well, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon with my buddy here, and not you, Ralph, this other buddy, and I'm going to jump on the Penn State bandwagon. Uh, you look at Ohio State, and yes, that line, you make a great point about the advance line, what it is, because I think a lot of people were still questioning Penn State, 
you know, they did answer in a big way last week against Michigan. It was a great defense. But <laughs> I'm looking at Ohio State. They've had five straight blowouts, you know, and everybody's jumping on the Ohio State bandwagon. I'm sorry. Your five blowouts were against Army, UNLV, Rutgers, Maryland, and Nebraska. S just stop already. You're your five. Uh, yeah. Am I now Ohio State? Yeah, you're now Ohio State. You're, <laughs> you're from Ohio. You're Ohio State. Uh, that was five, you know, bad teams. None of them play defense. Penn State has a great offense. And you look at what Penn State, they're 7-0. and They've won every game by 19 points or more except the Iowa game. Okay, and everybody talks about the Iowa game. They outgained Iowa in that contest, 579 yards to 273. I'm sorry. I'm taking the points. I agree with my man, Chris. I don't disagree with you too often, but... We woke up Marco. Yep, we're, we're there. And you know what? Chris uh, has a, a special at Vegas Synergy this week I want to tell you guys about. You know, the best way to get Vegas Synergy is to get a seven-day all-access package because you guys release a lot of plays. You release them at different times throughout the week. You make moves when the number's right or when you get key information on injuries and such before everybody else gets it. So if you have a seven-day subscription, you get an email the minute the play is loaded into the system. It's the best way to go, and you guys have a special deal. You can get a discount this week if you use coupon code VS and the number 7. That's VS and the number 7. You can use that and get, uh, it'll end up giving you Vegas Synergy for seven days for just $69. That's less than $10 a day. Now that coupon expires at midnight on Friday, so take advantage of it. Use coupon code VS7. And we'll be back with more here at wagertalk.com.